Hola, hello. My name's Steve Hyatt, and my wife and myself run the Blue Marlin Seafood Restaurant and Torre Nueva. We started this restaurant around about May, and it's doing extremely well, we're pleased to say. Um, so what we're going to do today is to show you one or two of the dishes that we do here, and something later on you can make at home rather quickly. Okay, so we'll start. So this is going to be a bang bang shrimp. And we're going to start and we use romaine lettuce. Just take the top off a bit. Just make sure that it's nice and clean. It has been washed. I'm going to shred it into a nice fine shred. Make it a little bit more as that won't fill the bowl. Pop him into the bowl. This is going to be for your base in your whatever you want to use dish, glass, bowl, anything you like, plates, anything. And we add to that a little seaweed. This is dried seaweed, which you can actually get at uh, Super Sol and uh, Carrefour, places like that. Just a little seaweed in there. And what that does is just gives you a bit of colour into your leaves and a little bit of extra flavour. And then we're going to add to it a little sesame oil, toasted sesame oil I prefer, but you can use any sesame oil you like. Just give it a bit of mix. And then we're going to pop them into the glass. And this is your base. can try and keep it away from the edges, it looks a little bit neater and tidier. Mm -mm. Okay. Then we're going to make the bang bang sauce. Quite simple, Your mayonnaise, sweet chilli sauce and I always have problems pronouncing the name of this one, Siriacha. Anyway, it's a hot chilli sauce in English. So. <laughs> So what we do, we have a little mayonnaise, add some sweet chilli sauce, that gives you a colour, and this is entirely up to yourself how much of this you put in. It can be very hot or just mildly hot, or you don't have to put in at all if you don't want to. Then you're going to come out, yeah, just a couple of drops because it's extremely hot. Then we're going to mix that in. Make sure it's well mixed. Okay, so it's nicely mixed in. And next, we're going to take some prawns and some corn flour. Now, you can either do this in a bowl if you wish to do so, but I like to get one of these containers. You probably have an Indian carry out, keep the container as we do. Yeah. Makes it easier to coat the prawns. So I've got here six tiger prawns. Again, you can buy these in your local supermarket or you can get the ones you can peel, but make sure you peel and when you do peel it, make sure you devein it and split it but leave it whole. There is a reason for that actually. It spreads when it cooks and it gives you a bit of presentation than having just one big lump of prawn. So there we've got the prawns in the container, corn flour over the top, and this is what I like about this. Just made a mess there. Just shake it. And you don't get a load of mess all over the place, not like I've just done out of the box, but a load of mess. It's quite mess free, they're well coated, and that's you. Then I'm going to pop them into the fryer. Let's give it a little shake. Now 
and deep fry them. I'm just going to wait for them to get a bit crunchy. Takes two to three minutes to cook. Right, we're there, so just let that drain. And make sure your oil's well drained off before you add it to your sauce, or you end up splitting your sauce. And while it's nice and hot, you put into the cold sauce. And mix. Okay, we'll coat it. It's a bit of a twist on a prawn cocktail, really. seaweed with the shrimp because the shrimp now is nice and crispy just wipe the edge of the glass take off any marks then here I've got some deep fried leeks we shred them very very finely dust them in flour and deep fry them till they come out this colour and it's just used purely for garnish. That's your top on the top. Little paprika, just for a little bit of colour again on the top of that. And then we've got the blue marlin bang bang shrimp. Hope you enjoy it. Hello again, welcome back to the Blue Marlin Seafood Restaurant in Torrenueva. Today we're going to do a little bit of cured salmon. This is quite good for Christmas or New Year, whatever, when you've got folks coming round. Uh, because when it's cured, it's going to actually stay in your fridge for about a week to ten days. So it's, it's a really good dish and quite simple to do. So we've got here a piece of salmon, which you can actually get this size salmon quite easily in your local supermarket, mainly Mercadona. Right. This is a 750 gram piece, right. so I'm just going to trim it to make it a little bit easier to carve. Trimmings off and take the end off. Right, it'll fit in your container a little bit better. A little bit of fat here to come off. Now when you do this, make sure you've got the skin on, don't skin it. But often it comes with the scales, but this has been pre-scaled so it's not so bad. And if it has got the scales, you just put it in the sink on a chopping board and you go with the knife on a pot and just go down and take off all the scales. Quite simple to do really, but messy. You keep finding scales every week all around your sink. Right. And what we're going to do, we've got a tray here, make sure it's a reasonably deep tray because you get a lot of liquid out of this and you've got a good length of the cling film actually in and over the top of your container. And we're going to place the salmon skin side down into your container. Then we're going to make the mix. We've got here 100 grams of caster sugar and 100 grams of sea salt, coarse sea salt. So it's quite a grainy mix. Right. So make sure that's mixed in. So you mix that both together. And this is what's uh, going to cook your salmon, because it's cold cooking. Next thing, you want a piece of fresh beetroot. Don't use out of a jar or a can or anything like that at all, it doesn't work. It has to be fresh beetroot, okay? So I'm just going to top, top off. You don't even have to peel it. You can use it as it is with the skin and everything else, so that makes it a bit easier again. And you get a grater, I like a fine grater myself, instead of the heavy grater. You find you get a better mixture and it spreads easier. And then just grate this into your salt and sugar mix. Right, 
little bit messy, but I normally do it with a glove. But I haven't got one today. And then I've got some juniper berries. And we're going to chop the junipers and add that to the mix. And for this, 10 or 12 grams is all you need. These usually go over your chopping board. Just rough chop them, they don't have to be a particular size. This will enhance the flavour. Makes as you know, gin is made with juniper berries. This is probably the longest job they'll have. Unless you get some nice fresh ones, of course, which but the only place I've found them actually fresh is in Tormelinus at a spice shop. Alright, then we're gonna add that to the mix. And then we're gonna stir it all in. Got a lovely colour already. Nice and pink. And this then will actually stain your salmon. So the presentation is much nicer as well as the flavour. Right. So now we've got good lengths of cling film either side, so that's quite important. It's when you're wrapping. And all we do is you take your mixture. Spread it nice and thick all over your salmon. Doesn't matter if bits fall off because when you wrap it, you also want it to do the sides of the salmon as well, so that's fine. Make sure it's coated. Then we've got the best bit, the Larius gin, Spanish. And you don't overdo this because there's too much liquid, right? But just sprinkle across the top. Because you're going to get a lot of liquid coming out of your salmon anyway and your beetroot. So there's your gin. So then I'm going to pull up the sides on the cling film, take that piece over the top, you can see that, and just press it down nice and firm. Same with the other one, over the top again, so it's nice and firm. And it shouldn't be leaking, but it will once you get a little bit more liquid coming out of your salmon. And then this, you pop in the fridge on your leave. You can do these after 12 hours, but personally I like to leave it at least 24 and possibly longer if you wish to do so. A couple of days is fine. But don't leave it much longer after that. Now you pop in your fridge. And then the favourite saying, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> so this now, we're going to wash it off, unwrap it and wash it off. And then I'm going to show you how to carve it. Okay, so what we're going to do now, is you can see the amount of liquid that comes off it, so don't put too much of the gin in. Enough anyway. Beautiful colour. And we're going to unwrap it. Take it out of the wrapper and then wash it off. Beautiful, beautiful colour. 
and you'll fe feel it and it's actually quite firm because it's now cooked. Right, so that's now washed and cleaned, and I'm going to show you now how to carve it. You need quite thin slices, so you need a good sharp carving knife. And please don't use a serrated one, whatever you do, because that's going to tear the meat. So I'm going to take it at an angle. We never really use the first bit. And then we're going to nice and thin carve. You can see how thin that is, you can even read through it. It's actually much better to carve it that thin. There's still a little bit of juniper there, but that's fine. So, so it's a great thing for Christmas, this, because you can leave it in your fridge for a while. Okay, so that's nicely carved. But if you see the colours when it's been cured, it's a nice presentation. And then we're just going to add a little yoghurt. Oh, there's a dip. So a little bit of yoghurt as a dip. And a little bit of fresh mint for a garnish. And there you've got salmon cured beetroot and gin.